Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joy Evans. And today we're taking a look at a game called Steam Up. And I gotta say, this is one of my most anticipated games. I was so excited because it just, it looks gorgeous. The components on this are unbelievable. I think everyone they saw on a Kickstarter were like, this is, this is great. Cause it's, and they feel as good as they look. Yeah, we're talking about the Kickstarter. You'll see that in a moment. Right. I will say there's a shameful secret though behind us talking about this game. Yes. What, do we like dumplings? Oh no. no. Are you going to mention that? No, the fact that you have not had dim sum hardly ever. Okay, yeah, and I still haven't technically. Yeah, you ate two pieces. Because you wouldn't let me order, and you just grabbed things and put them on my plate. <laughs> That's I how have, dim sum works. I have no idea what I ate. All it was right. good. We'll go to a real dim sum restaurant here in, uh, in Miami at some point. Is there one? Yeah. There's like two or three. Okay, then we'll go there. Yeah, they're fantastic. Anyway, then they have a lot more of kind. I love dim sum. I really do. Um, and I love these little baskets. I love the I love the concept of this, and they steam each other, and it's just fun. I understand the game more now after going, just so everyone knows. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, let's take a look at how it plays, and we'll be right back. In this game, you're going to set up the board randomly. You're going to put a bunch of steamers with two, three, or four dim sum in each. Now, I do want to point out here that I was attracted to this game because of how beautiful the dim sum are. These are little rubbery dim sum in these trays. I do have the original ones which come, I guess, with the retail version, which are little tokens. That's fine, but not nearly as cool. But each person is going to get a one of the 12 animals from the Chinese calendar. So you'll have this. This is going to do a couple things for you. It tells you how many um, tokens you're going to start with, how many cards you'll start with, a special ability that you might have, and as you collect dim sum in this game, you're going to be placing it in the appropriate row here on your board, and this is how many points you're going to score for them. So you can see sometimes, like this one here, the seafood lover really likes the seafood dim sum. You can get up to four points if you get a lot of that, while less points for the other ones. So there's all different kinds here. Each one has a matching little animal token, which will keep track of your points over here. The game is going to continue to a certain number of these trays are taken off of the board. On a player's turn, they have two options. More specifically, they have two actions, and they have four, five different options. One of them is to take one of these tokens. So there's going to be tokens that match the different colors of dim sum that are available in the game. You can only take each action once, so this action you can only do once, although there is an alternative action that if you have these cards, you can discard two of them to draw another token. Speaking of these cards, you can also just draw a card or play a card. That's two different ways to do the action. These cards do a variety of things. This tells you to take the first player marker for the next turn and choose a type of token. Everyone gets a token of that type. This one says give two of your tokens to another player. Why would you do that? And it tells you here at the end of the game, having too many tokens is worth too many. Swap a dim sum on your board with a dim sum in the top steamer. Uh, when there is a filled row of dim sum on your board, gain two victory points and discard, discard. Not hardy points, I'm sorry. I keep saying victory points. Discard another fortune card from your hand to get two uh, hit points. Move the top steamer in any stack to the top of an adjacent stack. So things like that. And then the main action that you'll be doing on your turn is if you have tokens that match the colors in any of the steamers that are out there. So say, for example, I want to take this steamer here. First of all, it has to be in my area. So you're going to use this based on the number of players. So this is a five-player game. And I'll have a certain area. You'll put this on the board, and i say, OK, anything in this area is mine. So I can go to any of these two steamers. Anytime you take a card or play a card, you will rotate the board 90 degrees. There's little arrows to keep track. And you can rotate it in either direction. But if I want to take this one here, this steamer, I will pay two white and one yellow token. I now take that steamer off. It reveals a new one, if there's any left, and I'll put these on my board. I then take a look at the track over here and move this down one to show that another steamer has been taken. When that track hits zero, the game is going to end. Players are going to lose points for leftover tokens. They're going to see how many points they've gotten from special abilities and cards and from putting dim sum on their board and whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, again, unbelievable how it looks. Yeah. But, so there's, I do have one major complaint about the components. One? 
Oh, components. Okay, got the components. That stupid ring on the outside <laughs> that shows where your things are doesn't snap in place. It like just sits around the outside. It's so it's so fiddly to the point to where we thought we were doing it wrong. We're like it doesn't just exist to exist, but it doesn't make any sense at all. I don't understand. Did we even use it for any of the games? We took it off, right? We took it off. We put these little markers down to show. And the book shows a nice colored area which right. you control, which you could have just done. Easily. Well, I mean, I get they're like, oh, well, three, four, five players. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I just That was my biggest complaint because you're like, well, after a while, I'm like, you know what? It's just the two in front of me. Right. Those are the two I can take. And I don't even need the lines. These are the two I can take. It's pretty easy to figure out. I'm not sure why that ring it, it moves around everywhere. It makes no sense. So work around it. And the tiniest negative thing is the actual little rubbery um, the dim, sum. dim sum. If you don't set them flat, we'll keep the trays from not stacking as well. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. But Besides still that, really cool. the components are unbelievable on this. And they look good. And people walk up to this and say, wow, what is this? And you would love to say, this is a just a great game. <laughs> you would love to say that's, that. That's foreshadowing. <laughs> um, <sighs> the concept of the game is one that's in a lot of games. Right. Collect stuff. Turn it in. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a pick up and deliver if you think about it. I'm collecting these tokens to turn them in to grab something. So, oh, I want yeah. that tray. I need a green, a yellow, and a white. Great. Yeah. What tray? <sighs> the tray that's in front of you. Is the tray in front of you? I don't know. It might be, it might not be. It doesn't, I mean, for you that don't like hate drafting, you are not going to like this game. There are certain times you have to hate draft. That's the only thing your card can do, is, hey, is you know someone's going for this, you will move that away from them, so you have to move it back, a lot of that. Right, that's a, uh, so that's one rule I actually dislike in this game, Yeah. is you take these cards, or you play a card, and you can rotate the thing 90 degrees. Yep. You rotate it so much because almost every turn you're taking or playing a card. Yep. Because you can't do the same action twice, so you, you almost always take a token. Right. Like that's almost always the thing. And then if you have enough tokens, you always, if you can take a thing, you always take one. Right. But you often don't have that. So then you're like, I will take a card or play a card. And I can now rotate it. Well, let me see. Well, Joey's collecting those. I rotate this as far away from him as possible. Every, why would you not do that? It's almost bore. <laughs> hate to say the word boring, in the fact that you're doing the same things over and over, and they're going to do the same things. So there's very little guesswork in it. Now, there are asymmetric powers as far as who you get, but even those are, I almost feel like they're unbalanced, like I'm going to say definitively they're unbalanced. Some are clearly better than others. Oh, it's brutally unbalanced, yeah. It's, I mean, to where you're jealous, you're like, man, should have picked that guy because he's just sitting here just chowing down on him so I'm like, I just, I get one. It's rough. So the, the problem with the game, besides the unbalanced powers, right. is just the randomness. Yeah. And there's two major forms of randomness. One is the, the randomness of the card deck. Right, right. Some of those cards are awesome, some yep. are not. There's also, and I didn't show this in the overview, at the beginning of each round, you turn over a small card that's a random event. <laughs> you have no idea what that thing's going to do. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But also, in between, I think there's a lot of downtime. We're playing with four players. There's a lot of just sitting there, you know? And you can't even decide until you get there which way things are going to The downtime got to me, too. The other randomness is player randomness. The, so with two players, it's, it's more manageable. But with three, four, five, it doesn't matter what you do. Right. You might as well just like stare at the ceiling because if you look at one of those, you're like, ooh, that looks delicious. It, the guy's going to eat it before you. This is like, I used to, I don't know. So you've eaten sushi, I'm sure. I have. Little conveyor belts. I do. Yes. Okay. So do you ever have this like FOMO? So it comes by and I'm like, <laughs> I wonder if I should take that. Let me think about it. And it goes around, and right before it comes to you, another guy's like, yoink. All the time. <laughs> that happens. It almost just like, oh, I can't wait to get that. And then he just gets so angry. Like, why did you? And it's, yeah, that yeah, happens Why do you dare eat my food? <laughs> so that's what this feels like, because you're like, I'm collecting a white and a yellow, and I got another yellow and a green. Okay, a green, two yellows, whites, I'm ready. And then he's like, I'm going to take one of these out. And then the next person's like, and now I'll buy that. And then you reveal <laughs> it, and it's two reds and a yellow. I'm like, oh, well. 
Okay, so annoying. And you can take it even if you don't need it, because you're like, I know you need it, so I'm gonna take it. And there's also no reason to not take them if you can. No. There's not negative points for taking them. Some might be worth zero to you, but just moving up on those tracks. And then as the game goes by, there's less and less available. Right. So pretty soon you're down to a few trays, and then mm -hmm. it's just, Rotate, 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 rotate until I get until I get lucky and I can rotate in front of me and I have the things to buy that. Lucky is kind of the key to this game. It really is. That is there's a lot I mean there's some mitigation to it, but not a lot. It's it's really luck based a lot. Do you agree with that? I do. So then let me swing back a little bit by saying, but I don't hate it. No, I don't either. I'd play it again. It's fun in some ways to collect the things. I wish that they had taken every player. The, the animals, yep, and I wish they had a base side for that, because I would actually play that way, without the special powers, or everyone got the same amount of points for everything. Yeah, that I would do too, because seeing those, seeing how many points everyone else is getting for their different dim sums, that's what these are, a little close. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What? Well, or that, dumplings or whatever. Or dumplings. That actually makes you like, <laughs> ah, because that is, that's almost depressing, the fact that you're killing it over there, and I'm just slowly getting two every time. That was right, rough. so I think I would play everyone the same if I could. Yeah. But also, if you take it on a very light level, like we're talking like this is like a mass market game. It is. I play a card, I like to move this, I rotate that, and I never feel, you don't feel like you have really any control in the game. No, and it's one of those things that I think it's it's going to be fun for the family. If you're looking for a family style game, very few family weight games look this good on the table. So that has to be taken into account, how great the components are on it. It does, although sometimes I hold that against the game right. in a sense of it looked good. I was hoping to like this one a lot more than I, I did. Me too. It's very light, very chaotic, and I have a hard time enjoying that. That being said, I can, if I turn my brain off and don't get too caught up in everything, right. it's not awful. I, I mean, I have fun actually collecting them and the components do give me some joy and I sit there and it builds up. So to that end, I'm giving it a six. I don't dislike it, but I'll probably never ask to play it either. Yes, I would, I'd probably come in at a 5.5 on it, which seems low, but. It is, just as I had It is, it is low, but really, I don't know if I'd play it again. It is low, but it's just, it's a very light beer and pretzel style game, and I'd probably be between that and a six. If because you hate extreme good. randomness, though, you'll give this like a three. That's, you really would. That's the, that's, that's the part that got to me, because I tried to put some strategy in. You just have to sit back and enjoy it and know what it is. Yeah, if you're like, ooh, my guy gets more points for getting red dim sum. You may never see one. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, just the way it works, right? So, anyway. That's where I was. Still looks cool. Steam up. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joy Evans. And we're going to eat dim sum. I need to try it. We're, we're really not. No. Sandwiches. <laughs> I wish.